the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So, obviously, when you undertake something like this, you know you're going to get to speak to a lot of people. You also know you're going to be open to criticism. When you went into the first debate, were you prepared for <laughs> Because you became very memeable right yes, away. Very memeable. Uh, did you enjoy those? Uh, were you suspecting that? They were mainly hilarious. Okay, good. So I was down on the floor laughing as much as everybody was. We uh, were watching the first <laughs> debate uh, that night. Kate McKinnon was on our show, uh -huh. and I was watching the debate live with her. And when you uh, first started to speak, uh, it's the biggest I've ever seen her eyes get. <laughs> because she then uh, immediately had an impression of you. Did you see Do Kate's? Do have big eyes? No, it's just her eyes got big with excitement mm -hmm. to have a political impression that she could do that quickly. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Okay. I enjoy, you know, the vast majority of the stuff around the memes and stuff, there wasn't malevolence there. And I think that, you know, it's like what you were doing earlier on the show. First of all, uh, political cartoons and jokes goes back all the way to the beginning of our country. And it's an important part of our public discourse. Look what you did earlier this evening. Very funny, very funny. And then somehow that opened the space and you got really serious. I tried. About uh, and the harm being done. And the fact that you began it with humor, I think it's important. It opened the space. That's the trick. That's the trick. <laughs> You, uh, you, it has a place. It's you a have, uh, you've talked about uh, uh, bringing a moral compass to politics, and I think, obviously, uh, that is drawing a distinction with what is happening right now mm -hmm. in uh, the White House. Do you think that moral compass would be a platform that would resonate as much right now if there was someone else in the White House? Well, hopefully we wouldn't need it mm -hmm. if somebody else was in the White House, but the issue is that he is. And I don't believe we will beat him with a political argument or an economic argument or even a purely rational argument, but we will beat him with a moral argument. He has no defense there because he has no sense of morality or ethics, so he has no defense against it. He can't engage. I think a lot of people, certainly uh, voters in the Democratic primary, have already reached the conclusion that he is immoral, uh, which is the position that you hold, and that some people are also, some criticism has been that you have said that plans are less important than drawing this moral distinction. Uh, how do you react to that? I have never said that plans are less important in terms of the presidency. I have talked about how we defeat him in 2020. And for that, I've said, let's remember, in the last election, we had the most qualified candidate, and she certainly had plans. All I'm talking about when I talk about plans alone will not get the job done has to do with defeating him in 2020. You know, sometimes Democrats don't realize, I think a lot of us don't realize, the part of the brain that rationally analyzes an issue is not always the same part of the brain that decides who to vote for. So we have to have a much more expanded, much more integrative um, uh, political strategy that includes psychology and emotion and, yes, even spirituality and morality. That's where people live, and that's where you vote from. Are you finding it hard in the constraints of a debate format to get across a message of spirituality and morality and psychology? I, because it's just you have small chunks of time to talk, and I think... Ultimately, even if you have specific plans, they are 90-second chunks of time. Have you been frustrated by that when you were out there? Well, except for Montana. I was uh, the most Googled person. You were the most Googled person in Montana? No, no. I was the most, after the second debate, I was the most Googled person, except Montana, because the oh, Steve, Steve Bullock, Bullock right, and right. Bullock, the, what, they didn't know who their governor was? <laughs> so I'm saying, I'm, so, so I think I'm doing okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, look, obviously, uh, you know, uh, hopefully tonight, uh, people in, uh, in Montana will be Googling. Um, I love Montana. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't pander. Um, <laughs> you can't say anything. You're very...